You ready? Yes. Ms. Ross? You may proceed. For a sentencing, we would first like to present victim and patch testimony to His Honor, and then I will uh, proceed with uh, talking about merger or issues like that in the sense that the state would be seeking. But I'm going to go at this time and, and call the uh, witnesses up who wish to be heard for victim impact. So first I would like to call Allison Phillips. And why don't Allison, John, and um, Warren come on up together, the three of you. And defense counsel has uh, agreed that there's no need to swear um, the witnesses for the statement. If you could come over here, Ms. Phillips. So before the court, Your Honor, uh, first will be Allison Phillips, and she's Lakin's mom. Behind her is her husband and Lakin's stepfather, John Phillips, and then their daughter, Lakin's sister, Lauren. Your Honor, on February 22nd of 2024, our family and friends were given a life sentence without a chance of parole. Jose Abaro took no pity on my scared, panicked, and struggling child. There is no end to the pain, suffering, and loss that we have experienced or will continue to endure. On that horrific day, My precious daughter was attacked, beaten, and shown no mercy. She fought for her life and dignity and to save herself from being brutally raped. This sick, twisted, and evil coward showed no regard for Lake and her human life. We are asking that same be done to him. Lakin had a beautiful and bright future. She was smart, hardworking, kind, thoughtful, and most importantly, she was a child of God. She had a personal relationship with Jesus, and she loved being the hands and feet of his hands and feet in this world. She shared her love for our Lord with others through her mission trips, working with elderly at the nursing homes, and through her nursing career. Lakin was an amazing friend sister, niece, daughter, and granddaughter. Anyone who knew her knew about her loving heart. Lakin's life was not the only life taken on that day that Jose Abara attacked her. The life of her family and friends was taken too. None of us will ever be the same. This monster took away our chances to see Lakin graduate from nursing school. He took away our ability to meet our future son-in-law he took, destroyed our chances of meeting our grandchildren, and he took my best friend. <laughs> he ripped away every beautiful memory we will ever be able to make with her again. This horrific individual robbed us all of our hopes and dreams for Lakin. Your Honor, I'm asking you to please give Jose Abara the same thing he gave us when he made the choice to take Lakin's life and destroy ours. He showed no mercy on Lakin when she was begging for her life. <laughs> There's no end to the pain and suffering that he inflicted on our family and our friends. I'm asking you to please give this monster life without any chance of parole so that he never gets the chance to hurt anyone else ever again. This is John Phillips, Ron. I'd like to thank Your Honor for the opportunity to speak today. I truly appreciate it. I heard in the opening statements from the defense that the loss of a life that was apparently full of promise is tragic. I'm here today to let Your Honor and the entire world know 
that Lincoln's life was not apparently full of promise, but instead was abundantly and exceptionally full of promise and was a shining beacon in the life of everyone that knew her that ever came in contact with her. I'm so proud of Lincoln and the beautiful person she was. And while I can stand here and try to tell the world the things that made her such a wonderful person, as well as the many things we have all been robbed and deprived of, I think one of her last journal entries dated 12-17-23 says it best. So here we go. To my future husband, as silly as I feel writing this, my old small group leader once recommended it, so here I am. To my future husband, I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. I'm working every day to become the best wife I can be by working through my current relationships to best prepare me for ours and our kids one day. I'm focusing on God and what He defines as a faithful Christian wife and so that I can best embody those characteristics. I pray that you know that it is with my full faith and trust in God that I know this relationship has been handcrafted by Him. I pray that we continue to glorify the Lord, prioritize Him in every aspect of our lives, and raise our family, our future family, to be God-fearing Christians as well. I pray God is the center of our relationship it is, as it is a gift from Him. I thank Him for you before I even know you. I can't wait to love you in the best way I know how for the rest of our lives. <laughs> I pray you know and feel the importance of my love and hopes for our relationship. No matter what challenges we face, I pray that our trust in God and love for one another overrules the obstacle. May our relationship last forever. Your future wife, Lakin. That, Your Honor, was our beautiful Lakin. That, Your Honor, is just a glimpse of what was tragically and brutally taken from her and us that day. The best daughter, sister, granddaughter, friend, and overall person that you could ever hope to meet. While it's true that none of our lives will ever be the same, we refuse to let this person rob Lakin of the hope she gave to her family, loved ones, friends, and the world as a whole. We will proudly carry this hope on in her name in the days ahead and for the rest of our lives because together we can all keep hope alive. So today, I plead with this court to protect the world from this truly evil person by sentencing him to prison for life without the possibility of parole for any reason so that he can never have the opportunity to do this to anyone else ever again. Thank you, Your Honor. Next, Your Honor, is Lauren Phillips. Your Honor, I wish I could truly put into words how much the tragedy that occurred on February 22nd, 2024 has affected me, but I don't think I'll ever be able to do so. With that being said, I'm going to attempt, uh, to attempt with the best of my ability to do that for you today. My name is Lauren Phillips, and I have the amazing privilege of living with Lakin Riley as my older sister. Lakin was and will forever be my most favorite person. She was my biggest role model, and I looked up to her in every way. She brought the joy that I needed into my life and never failed to make me laugh. There was absolutely nothing that I wouldn't do for Lakin and nothing that she wouldn't do for me. Lakin was my biggest protector and I always had this sense of comfort and safety in her presence. We've been inseparable ever since the moment I was born and I've been lost ever since she was senselessly stripped from our lives 
by Jose Antonio Ibarra. I now have this hole in my heart and in my life that I know will never be filled. I had to walk the stage of my high school graduation without my biggest supporter and cheerleader in the crowd. I had to finish my senior year of high school, which most would say is the happiest and most surreal part of your life, but it was simply the opposite for me. I had to turn 18 and become an adult without the one person I looked up to there by my side. I had to get accepted into my dream school, the University of Georgia, without my sister telling me how proud of me she is and finally giving, getting to live in the same town together again. I now have the burden of dealing with the fact that my best friend and sister will never come home again. She'll never send me another daily good morning text, funny TikTok or silly Snapchat. The true sense of joy I felt when she would randomly surprise me will never happen again. I will never get to hear her infectious laugh or see her light of a smile ever again. I now get to explain to people when they ask me if I have a sibling that I no longer have one, and not just because she passed away, but because she got brutally attacked and murdered. I cannot walk around my own college campus because I'm terrified of people like Jose Ibarra. My parents will never be the same after losing their daughter in this tragic way. Seeing their heartbreak is excruciating. We were once a happy family of four, and now there is an evident hole where her presence is forever felt. We are a broken family of, of three, struggling to find out how to live this life through the silence and emptiness that her absence has left behind. The joy that she brought to our home has been completely replaced with grief, and we are just left holding the pieces of a life that will never feel whole again. She will not get to me at my wedding and next to me as my maid of honor. I get to deal with explaining to my future children what happened to their Aunt Lakin and why they won't ever be able to get to feel her love or be spoiled by her. All of these experiences were and will, sh and will be stripped of me against my will, and I now live in a constant state of fear, anger, and sadness. I think about how my sister saw exactly what was coming and had no way of preventing it. I think about how scared she must have been and how that man is the only one to truly witness that scene. I'm not sure why he did this to my Lakin, and I know I will never understand. I've waited for him to have a reason, but as the details of this case have unfolded, I realize I'll never get any peace or closure. What Jose Ibarra did to my sister is almost unbearable to listen to. I am completely disgusted having to even look and be in the same room as him. That predator is inhumane and is the epitome of evil. I have no doubt in my mind that the monster sitting in this room with us today is the same monster that encountered my precious sister on February 22nd, 2024, where he proceeded to attack, assault, beat, murder, and attempt to rape her. Jose Antonio Ibarra has completely and utterly ruined my life, and I can only hope and pray that he receives a sentence that ruins his. Thank you. Your Honor, I stand here today as a grieving father whose heart has, was shattered in ways I never thought possible. My daughter, Lake and Riley, was not just our child. She was the light of my life, the person who brought joy to every room she entered. And now that light has been extinguished forever, taken from us in the most senseless and violent way imaginable. The pain I feel is unexplainable. Every day I am reminded that my daughter is gone. I will never hear her laugh again, never see her smile, never hold her hand or feel her hug. 
She was taken from us, from her family, from her friends, from her future. Our world has been torn apart, and no matter what happens here today, nothing will ever bring her back. I am haunted by the thought of the fear she must have felt in those final moments, and it breaks my heart knowing that she suffered. I have to live with the fact that I could not protect her when she needed me the most. The pain of not being there, of not being able to stop what happened to her, is something I will never escape. My daughter had so many dreams, so many hopes for the future. She had worked so hard to become a nurse, to work with children, and spread the love of God. She was a loving, kind, and intelligent young woman. She had so much to offer the world, and her life was taken from her far too soon. I will never get to, I will never get to see her achieve those dreams. The void that has been left is unmeasurable. The impact of her loss on our family is immeasurable. As a father, I am forever burdened with the pain of losing my child. I will spend the rest of my life trying to navigate this grief, trying to make sense of the world that took my daughter from my, our family. But I will never forget her. I will keep her memory alive. And I hope justice is served for her, not only because I'm her father, but because she deserves it. I ask that you consider this life that was taken, the pain that has been caused, and the lasting effects of this tragedy on everyone who loved our amazing daughter, Lake and Hope Riley. Thank you. Lily Steiner, Sophia Magana, Good afternoon. As I stated in my testimony, my name is Connelly Huth. Lake and Riley was my roommate for two years, my devoted and loyal running partner for two years, and my best friend forever. I stand before you looking at you through eyes that have seen, ears that have heard, and a heart that has felt emotions no body, and especially no 22-year-old, should have to. On February 21st, my life was complete. I woke up on February 21st at 7.30 a.m., walked out of my bedroom door to streamers hung outside of my bedroom from the top of the door frame to the floor, balloons blown, decorations taped, and gifts presented precisely on my kitchen island. Lakin did it. It was my 22nd birthday. <laughs> she had a 5 a.m. nursing clinical, yet she woke up at 4.30 a.m to make me feel loved and appreciated because that is who Lake and Riley was. I went to dinner that night with my roommates and my family and ended the night with my roommates and especially Lakin showering me with love. It is clear and evident that this defendant, Jose Ibarra, has never felt this type of love and appreciation. I've been impacted by this brutal, cowardice, and preventable tragedy in every way, shape, and form. I no longer have a best friend that I relay every thought or worry to. I no longer run every day. I lost my partner and I lost the joy of what running was before Lakin was taken from us. I cannot imagine running when I constantly am looking over my shoulder in public, wondering if I am next. I live with, I live with excruciating guilt every day that I was not accompanying Lakin on this run and that it was her and not me. And I hope and pray that it will never happen again to anyone. Along with this, the crime that this monster committed ruined one of the most special places in our friendship. Lake Herrick was Lake and I's safe space. We loved to go on running adventures throughout the park together. We had a code called Doc Time. Doc Time consisted of either ending our runs or taking a calming walk to the dock at Lake Herrick. Here, we would sit in silence, play music, or talk while sitting on the dock, simply enjoying, enjoying each other's presence. 
All it took was a text saying, I need doc time, and we were on the way to debrief whatever we needed to discuss. Now, when I think of this beautiful spot, I think of the terror and horror my sweet best friend had to endure at the hands of this monster. I think of all the things I have to do now to remember Lakin. At times, I forget how she laughs or how she sounds, and I have to resort to looking through my camera roll of hundreds of videos I have. Videos where I talk to my future kids and introduce them to their Aunt Lakin in college. To talk to my friend, I have to drive 20 minutes to her grave and sit and talk to her with no response, screaming at the sky. When I want to remember her, I have to go to my closet and pull out her clothes I was given and smell them to remember how she smelled. As I stand up here today, I am wearing one of Lakin's shirts. This shirt has sat in my closet for months, not because I'm saving it for an occasion, but because I cannot, rem I cannot afford to not remember these th things like this about her. I sit in therapy week after week trying to heal February 22nd and life after. When I hear emergency vehicle sirens, I am triggered. I sat that day and watched dozens of emergency personnel drive by as I sat helpless. My roommates, and, my roommates and I had to draw our own conclusions that the pinnacle of our house was no longer here when we watched a coroner drive by us after sitting at the fields for two hours with no answers. Our fears were confirmed when we received a university-wide email that alerted students, faculty, and staff that a female was deceased. I lost faith in humanity the day that my kind, selfless, beautiful, smart, loving, and perfect best friend left this earth. I will never understand why it had to happen in the first place, but more importantly, why out of all people, it had to be her. The world lost a girl who would take the clothes off her back for her family, friends, and even strangers who studied and devoted her life to Christ and nursing so she could save lives and make a difference in this world. Lakin cannot be replaced. If you had the ability to bring her back out of all this, I would give up every earthly possession I have to see her infectious smile, hear her contagious laugh, and her infamous love you girl, and I would hug her neck, but you cannot. Lakin made this world, and more specifically my world, better. My first two years of college, when I did not know Lakin, I went home all the time. My last two years of college, you had to drag me home. That was because Lakin was my person. So, Your Honor, I wish to proclaim the maximum sentence for the defendant, as I will never be the same. Her loving, beautiful family will never be the same, and this world will never be the same. I hope this sentencing sets a precedent so it stops with Lakin and fails to happen to anyone again. Lakin was a hero and a warrior. She died a hero and a warrior, and she is a hero, a hero and war warrior to all of us. Lakin was my source of light, joy, and unwavering happiness. So when her life was taken, so was the part of me that knew how to truly feel those things again. Thank you, Your Honor. Lily Steiner, Your Honor. Your Honor, my name is Lily Steiner, and as mentioned in my testimony, I was one of Lakin's roommates, friends, and family. On the day of February 22nd, 2024, Lakin Riley was taken by Jose Ibarra from her family, her roommates, her friends, her sorority sisters, her classmates, her future children, her future husband, and her future patients. This trial focused on the death of Lakin, which has overshadowed the life that she lived, the life that was stolen from this community. Lakin was the most driven student with the biggest heart of anyone I think I ever will meet. As roommates, we got to spend a whole lot of time together. We had our family dinners that were strictly chilly. We watched Dancing with the Stars every Tuesday. We had almost daily Starbucks runs, which I hoped to do that morning when I checked her location around the time she took her final breaths. We'd often get to a point at least once a week where we'd get emotional thinking about what life was gonna be like once we graduated. Lakin held a place in all of our imaginary futures. Now Sophia, Connolly, and I graduated in May, required to move on with our lives, while Lincoln can't. We have the privilege to get jobs and move to an exciting new city to experience post-grad life, but Lincoln doesn't. I'm currently working as a medical assistant, waking up every day dreading that I won't get a text from her to make my day better. I'm striving to work in the medical field, but I know I could never be half the healthcare worker that Lincoln would have been and that the world was deprived of. While living together, we often would play outside of our house in the middle of the street, specifically Foursquare. 
listening to a playlist I made called Playtime with My Family. Our home was such a special place to us, one that was tainted. Athens has never been the same, nor will it ever be. Shortly after Lakin's death, I had to come back to UGA to finish my classes without Lakin and without the safe space that we built together, and it was awful. Every time I wanted to go somewhere, I had to drive by the apartments that provided a roof over his head while he got to rip away ours. <laughs> Life without Lincoln has been so dull. And having to learn how to navigate time without her through grief, anger, and fear has been beyond difficult. So many people are lost without her. Lakin made her short time on earth so significant that she managed to impact those who she never even met. Lakin left a colossal legacy to everyone she touched, and I have zero doubt that she is still not finished building it. And that is something Jose Ibarra will never be able to take away. I hope to never say his name again, but to shout Lakin's every chance I get. I kindly ask your honor that you help us all in our long he healing journey by allotting the maximum sentence for Jose that unfortunately still won't make up for the beautiful life taken. Sophia Your Honor, my name is Sophia Magana. I'm Lincoln Riley's roommate of three years. I stand before you today with a heart full of grief, sadness, and an overwhelming sense of loss to my best friend. Lincoln wasn't just my best friend. She was my roommate, my sorority sister, and above all, she was my chosen family. The joy and kindness Lincoln brought into my life every single day can never fully be put into words. We confided in each other, supported each other through life's challenges, and celebrated our joys together. The loss of my best friend has shattered my world in ways I never thought possible. I never imagined that I'd have to navigate life without her by my side. Every day, her friends, family, and loved ones carry the weight of her absence, a weight that is heavy and unrelenting. Lakin was my fearless other half. As someone who's reserved and awkward, Lakin was always there to nudge me to step out of my comfort zone. She would pull me onto the dance floor and encourage me to try new things and remind me to live life to the fullest. I trusted her completely, and I always knew she was there for me, as I was for her. <laughs> Those small, precious pieces of life that we once took for granted are now reminders of what I've lost. <laughs> Lakin taught so many people in her life invaluable lessons. <laughs> she showed me how to find joy in every moment, how to embrace life with an open heart, and how to dance in a crowded room without caring what anyone else thought. Well, these lessons will stay with me forever. Lakin was not just my best friend. She was a devoted daughter, a loving sister, and a cherished friend to so many. She was an exceptional student with a bright future ahead of her, destined to become a nurse who would touch countless lives with her compassion and care. I miss hearing her laugh, seeing her smile, and hearing her voice, all of which brought warmth and light to all those around her. Now we are, now we are forced to confront an unthinkable reality. We will never again hear the joy of her laughter, feel the warmth of her smile, or find peace in the sound of her voice. The loss of Lakin has left a hole in our hearts that can never be filled. The monster who took Lakin's life has clearly never known love, like the love Lakin showed everyone in her life. Love that was boundless, love that was a testament to the amazing person she was. Jose Abara brutally attacked Lakin. And now spaces that were once filled with joy and peace are places I fear for my safety. I now live my life in a fear, constantly looking on my shoulder with the new reality that the unexpected can happen. A world Lakin taught me to embrace is now a world I feel unsafe in. Every day I put on a brave face as I step into my classroom, ready to teach and support my students. I mask my emotions and fears to shield them from the harsh realities of the world, <laughs> preserving their sense of security and innocence in the world. Yet inside, I'm struggling, <laughs> holding back tears until I can slip away to the bathroom or wait for the school day to end so I can finally let my true emotions surface beyond those four walls. <laughs> 
February 22nd, 2024 is a day I will never forget. It is a day Jose Barra chose to commit an unthinkable act of murder like kid. <laughs> he took from this world somebody who embodied love and light. Jose took my light, my sense of joy, my best friend, and my other half. Losing Lincoln has left an enormous hole in my life. The world feels quieter, emptier, and far less joyful without her in it. Her absence is felt in every corner of my day-to-day -day life, and I don't know how to fill the space that she once occupied. But what I do know is this. Lincoln's legacy of love, kindness, and friendship will live in all of us who knew her. The love she gave so freely will continue to guide me as I navigate this life without her. Jose Antonio Barra took Lincoln's life, and I hope that your verdict ensures that Jose experiences lifelong pain that is only a small glimpse of the pain we will live with daily since the loss of Lincoln. No punishment will ever truly account for what Jose has done, but it is my hope that justice will honor Lincoln's memory and the profound impact she had on all of our lives. <laughs> Thank you. Happy. Happy. It was 1.49 p.m. on February 22nd of 2024 that I learned Lakin was missing. I immediately text her, Lakin, where are you? Why are people saying you're missing? Just minutes after 2.17 p.m., a campus email came out confirming my worst nightmare. Lakin had been found unconscious and not breathing. Lakin, the girl I met in middle school and became best friends with our freshman year of high school. The girl I couldn't imagine being far away from when it came time for college, so we both decided to attend the University of Georgia together. The girl who stuck by me and got me through some of my toughest times in life, as, we, as well as accompanied me during some of my best. The loss of her is something I will never be able to come to terms with. I will never be able to come to terms with the fact that I was sitting in class just down the road, going about my day, the morning this horrific event was taking place. I will never not think about the last time I saw her, the pink sweatshirt she was wearing, and the last words she ever said to me. I will never not think about all the things I would have said had I known it would be my last time seeing her and talking to her. Myself, everyone up here, and the world has lost such a special person. Lakin was intelligent, patient, loyal, driven, and kind. Her pureness and love for the Lord were evident and shined through her in a way unlike anyone I have ever met before. She is in a better place, but it is not fair that the rest of us still here on earth have to suffer because of this individual's actions. Because of this individual, some of my happiest days, such as the day I get married and have kids, will be forever accompanied by a feeling of grief a sadness that Lakin will not be there with me to experience them. Because of this individual, I have so many fun memories, but no one here to share them with. Because of this individual, I will be searching for the rest of my life for a friendship like the one I shared with Lakin, but I know I will never find one because ours was simply unreplicable. I am here today to support Lakin. I hope to provide only a fraction of the support she continuously gave me during her time here on earth. I miss her desperately and long for the day I get to see her again. Since February 22nd of 2024, I will forever be changed. Sophia Plum. Palomino. Palomino. <laughs> 
Good afternoon. February 22nd, 2022 changed my life forever. Not being in Athens that day will forever haunt me. Finding out through an email will forever haunt me. And seeing this posted all over social media will forever haunt me. Lake and Riley was my best friend, the person I told everything to, and the person I trusted with anything. The pain of the last nine months has been indescribable. If you would have asked me a year ago where I thought I'd be and what I would do in 2024, I'd tell you I'd be finishing up my second to last semester of college with Lakin as my roommate as she finishes nursing school. I'd tell you we spent St. Patrick's Day together in Savannah, and I'd tell you we went on the trip we planned to New York. I'd tell you she finally got me into running, and she would train me for the ad half this year. I'd tell you many things and many of our plans, but instead I get to tell you how different my year was. I get to tell you that I can't do anything by myself anymore, even in broad daylight. I get to tell you that a town I used to love being in just fills me with dread. <laughs> that everywhere I go just reminds me of places we used to hang out and go on walks to. I tell you that I can't go past her old house and haven't been able to return to the I am field since. I tell you the weight of emptiness I feel when I still go to text her sometimes. This is now something I have to live with for the rest of my life knowing her life was taken too soon and things I was looking forward to will never happen. Being at each other's weddings, graduating together, and seeing each other start our careers. This wasn't just a life that was taken, it was a future stolen. It's difficult living with knowing that nothing and nobody will ever fill the hole that's been left in our absence. I will never get to experience her famous belly laugh again, her comforting presence, or her cheering me on as we go through life. So many what ifs play in my head over and over. If just one more thing, if just one more thing maybe would have changed her path that day. But instead, my reality is that she is not here. And that because of what this animal did, we have sat here all week hearing every fraction of evidence and reliving the worst days of our life on repeat. I know nothing will bring her back, even though I so badly wish it would. But justice would bring comfort to us all. No one who can take away such a light and sweet soul deserves to walk free ever again. The death of my best friend has changed my life forever. Carrie Howell. Hi, Your Honor. I've started this over and over and over. feeling paralyzed in my thoughts. With the overwhelming emotions, not knowing which direction to go, because there's so much that can be said today. Everyone has spoken so beautifully over her, and I had the privilege of getting to speak about her at her celebration of life and getting to talk about all of the beautiful and wonderful things about her. My name is Carrie Howell, and uh, my husband Matt and I have had the blessing of calling Lakin and Lauren's parents, John and Allison Phillips, our best friends. John and Matt met in college, where they were roommates and fraternity brothers, and they formed a bond as friends that grew into a true brotherhood. This brotherhood between them extended to connect our families together in the same exact way. It is a friendship that runs deep and loves big. Our families and children have grown up together and had many adventures and vacations together over the last 20 plus years. We have had the privilege and joy of watching Lakin and Lauren grow up. 272 days ago, on the morning of February 22nd, 2024, our lives were forever changed in a way none of us could have ever imagined. The moment I got the call from my husband that Lakin had not returned home from her morning run, that no one could get her on the phone and she was missing, I knew in my heart something horrific had happened to her. 
had the worst feeling that she was no longer with us, but I prayed and prayed and prayed as I frantically got ready to make the drive to Athens to be with my friends. I was begging the Lord for her to still be alive, and as terrible as this would be, that she had just been kidnapped and would be found physically unharmed and alive, or that she would be able to escape to safety and praying she wasn't being trafficked. I was literally praying for her to not be kidnapped. Like, that sounds so crazy. Um, But that just, at the time, seemed better than the alternative. I've never prayed for anyone to be kidnapped. I get the calls on my phone, and in fact, I pray for those people to be found and unharmed. Can you imagine your pleading prayers with the Lord being for someone you adore and love to just be kidnapped? That option gave me hope in that moment that she would be brought back to her family alive. I was desperate for my friends. This nightmare spiraled out of control when I received another call from my husband while he was on the road, or while I was on the road to Athens. John had called my husband, and he said to my husband, she's with Jesus, brother. That will never leave my memory. As my oldest daughter and I sat in traffic on our way to Athens, time seemed to have stopped in that moment. Yet, as we are here 272 days later, time has continued. It has continued in ebbs and flows of every emotion you can experience. Time has stood still in utter disbelief that this precious human is gone, while day-to-day life continues on. This was an act of pure evil at the hands of Jose Antonia Ibarra. He willfully chose to prey on innocent young women on the morning of February 22nd, with Lake and Hope Riley being the young woman he would succeed in torturing in the most excruciating and brutal way while she fought not only for her life, but for her dignity. He must have believed that she was there for his taking that he was entitled to whatever sick, perverted urges and desires he had that morning. Not one person on this planet has even one right to take what they want from a person simply because they want it. Yet Jose did that. Because of his evil actions, we are all being forced to learn how to navigate life with the stark, harsh reality of Lakin no longer being here. Her amazing friends have been robbed of the beautiful gift of lifelong friendships and doing life together with their future husbands and children, the way my family and the Phillips family have been blessed to do all of these years. Her grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins feel the absence of her presence constantly and have been robbed of the continued blessing of her being a bright light in their family. My family and I have journeyed alongside our dear friends as they attempt to navigate and learn how to live a new normal without their oldest daughter. I've gotten to know my best friend's face in a new way, a way I would give back if I could make returns on the most devastating circumstances life can hold. I look at her and I know when a situation is too much. I know when a comment is too much. I know when to be silent and when she needs encouragement. This year is showing on all of our faces like the harshness of cold winter days. That There seems to be no end in sight. But we will keep fighting because we refuse to allow Jose Antonio Ibarra to take anything else from us. And we serve a good and mighty God. We've already had been forced to journey through our annual family vacation without her. Family get togethers, fun events. And the absence of her presence is so deafening. I mean, sure, we still laugh, but we're still living. We're still here. So we have to keep living and we're gonna honor her with everything that we have. 
And we're just going to keep trusting in the Lord to help our dear friends and sweet Lauren um, with all of the things that they're now not going to experience with their daughter. No parent should have to say goodbye to their daughter in this manner. The loss of a child is devastating no matter what the circumstances are. But when it's something like this where evil intentionally goes out to harm somebody, there's no words for it. And so today I stand before you with her friends and family and we ask you, your honor, to bring earthly justice for our precious Lakin and for all of us who love her so very much. She was truly one of the most precious people that I've ever had the honor of knowing. She exhibited the fruit of the Spirit in the Bible um, because she truly lived her life for Jesus, as you got to hear um, John read in her journal entry. That was her. That was a private entry, not for anyone else. And you got to see the type of person that she truly is in her heart pure and lovely and her laugh that everyone has talked about literally one of all of our favorite things about her and we never get to hear it again because of him so we ask your honor for you to consider in your sentence sentencing for him to not be able to ever be out of prison and for him to spend all of his days there without any possibility of getting out thank you tell me your name uh, it is Carrie Howell. Carrie? Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, that at this time um, completes the, the statements for victim impact evidence from Lakin's family and friends. Um, I, the state would also have uh, a few more items to present for victim impact, and then um, I'll address the indictment with the court. And one of the things I wanted to share with the court is that a lot of times when we hear victim impact evidence, um, it is very much so the way that we hear it here in court. Hold on, I'm going to pause this for And But what we have in this case is something that I ran across in my review of the evidence in this case, which is really one minute of when or where this court will be able to get the true impact, the true impact of what the murder of Lakin Riley did to her family and the impact of his actions on her family. Because what the investigators did in this case is, as you know, they were all wearing body cam videos. And there's hundreds of hours of it in here. And there is one moment where, and I'm just gonna play one minute of it, just one minute of the horror that this family has gone through in the last nine months, and what they're gonna continue to go through for the rest of their lives. And it is the moment that they learned that their daughter was dead. And in this video clip that I'm showing, which I've marked as states 30, 333, at the top right corner, it's at 1950, you'll see a black truck. I don't want to tell you yes or no because I don't have names. I don't know who anybody is. 
That's what they endured. And that's how it was on that day when they came here to look for their daughter. And what it took away, you heard from her friends and family. And some of the things that you even heard in the trial, you got a little peek, just a little peek, about the personality of Lake and Riley. For example, in Lily's 911 call, one of the things she says is, Lake and never misses class. Never misses class. That's the kind of person she was. And in our review of all the evidence in this case, some of the things we had to look at were the social media presence of, of everyone, and there was a lot of digital evidence in this case. And the review of the digital evidence, I want to share with you just some of it, which has been marked State's Exhibit 336, is that Lakin was a very joyful and quite silly, playful person. And a lot of that is viewed in her social media. And the ring doorbell. Running. Same race. And these are just little snippets that we saw in the investigation that we thought would be important to share with the court that shows not only the type of person that she was that you just heard from her friends and family, but the true impact that her murder had on her parents. But more than that, one of the things that the court is permitted to consider in victim impact testimony is the impact that her death has on this community. And in that regard, the investigative team has spent a great deal of time out there at the crime scene, Lake Herrick, all of those trails, and looking for things, measuring things, just going about the daily jobs of homicide investigators and homicide prosecutors. And one thing that we noticed that's still there is States 335. It's a mural, a memorial to Lake and Riley that is still up there to this day that shows the impact of her death on this community. And that is something that Your Honor is permitted to consider in deciding what would be an appropriate sentence in this case. And you're, everyone is correct, and I'm sure we'll hear it. You know, whatever you do, Judge, you can't bring her back, and it's horrible. But what you can do is give comfort with your sentence. And what you can do, and what you are permitted to do, and what I, and what I urge this court to do, and what the law permits this court to do, is to exercise your discretion and your judgment in a way that brings comfort to this community and in a way that a sentence which appropriately reflects the harm that was done in this case. And a sentence of life without the possibility of parole would bring comfort to this community. And no matter what your sentence is today, and it will be litigated from here to 40 years from now, there is at least one person in this courtroom who will inherit it, and that is Lauren Phillips. That is Lakin's younger sister. And she should never, first of all, she's growing up without her sister. She's gonna have to raise, uh, deal with elderly parents alone. Her children won't have an aunt. She is an only child. And she should not have to worry 30 years from now, 40 years from now, if he comes up for parole, should he might get out? She should never have to worry about that. And your sentence can ensure that she will not have to worry about that. 
And so in looking at the indictment in this case, count one, the offense of malice murder, which this defendant has been found guilty of, in this particular case carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. It carries a minimum sentence of life imprisonment with the possibility of parole. The state is requesting that you sentence this defendant to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, not only due to the victim impact testimony, but also because if you read the indictment, which you have obviously, and uh, you're familiar with the facts of the case because you've heard the case, there are several statutory aggravators in this case that separates this case from a regular murder case. And yes, there is malice murder, and all malice murder is bad. I'm not saying there's a malice murder that isn't bad. But there are some malice murders which are more aggravated than others, and this is one of them. Kidnapping with bodily injury, which is the felony murder in count two, which by the way would be vacated as a matter of law, um, but not the kidnapping itself, which is count five. But kidnapping with bodily injury is an aggravating statutory factor under our sentencing scheme in the state of Georgia. It makes malice murder worse than regular murder. And for that reason alone, you should sentence this defendant to life without the possibility of parole. Aggravated battery, which is also in this indictment and which is also the facts and it's also something he's been convicted of, is also a statutory aggravator under our statutory scheme, which makes this murder different and worse than a regular malice murder. So there are aggravating circumstances, which you have already heard, which I will not repeat to you, um, but they're not only recognized by the facts, but are recognized by our statutory sentencing scheme. So going down the rest of the indictment, felony murder count two is vacated as a matter of law. Felony murder count three would be vacated as a matter of law. Felony murder count four would be vacated as a matter of law. On count five, kidnapping with bodily injury, the state is asking you to sentence this defendant to a sentence of life imprisonment with the possibility of parole, which is the maximum for that count. And we are going to ask that you run that consecutive to count one, a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for the malice murder. Count six is aggravated assault with intent to rape. It does not merge. In fact, it is a separate crime under these circumstances. The penalty for that is one to 20 years in prison. The state would be asking you to sentence this defendant to 20 years to serve in prison. Count seven of the indictment, the aggravated battery, would merge as a matter of law into count one. So we would not request a sentence on that count. Count eight, obstruction or hindering a person making an emergency telephone call is a misdemeanor. The maximum penalty for that is 12 months to serve in a county jail. We ask that you sentence him to that and run it consecutive to any other sentence that you impose in this case. Count nine, tampering with evidence, the way that it is actually alleged in the indictment and factually it is a misdemeanor. Um, so the, it, the maximum for that is 12 months to serve in the county jail, we ask that you sentence him to that and run it consecutive to any other sentence that you impose in this case. And finally, count 10 of the indictment, Peeping Tom, is a felony which carries a penalty between one to five years in prison. We ask that you sentence him to five years to serve in prison to run consecutive to count one. So to sum it up on count, the sentence would be on count one, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Count five, life imprisonment with the possibility of parole to run consecutive to count one. Count six, uh, 20 years to serve to run consecutive. Count seven will merge. Count eight, 12 months to serve to run consecutive. Count nine, 12 months to serve to run consecutive. And count 10, five, years to serve to run consecutive. And that is the sentence that the state is requesting. Mr. Donley. Yes, sir, um, thank you. Um, so obviously the court is aware that on counts, well, count one, uh, there are really only two options for the court. Um, it's an automatic life sentence. The only option is whether the court can uh, indicate that it should be without the possibility of future parole 
we're asking the court to not impose that. The, the life without parole. Is, getting a life sentence is automatic. There's certainly no guarantee of parole um, and uh, would be uncertain and it would be many decades in the future. And we do not oppose the state's recommendation that count the life sentence, which is also mandatory on count five, be made consecutive. Um, we certainly, uh, just to state the obvious, trust that the court will not consider for sentencing purposes the fact that uh, Mr. Obama had a trial. Um, the defense has made every attempt, made every effort to, to do its job and to pursue this process in a way to respect both the process itself and also to not cause any disrespect toward the feelings of Ms. Riley's loved ones. And we, if, if anything like that has happened, it certainly was not intended. And the defense is not immune to the sensitivity of this case, again, to not only her loved ones, but to the greater community. The state's request is not unexpected to us. We, we anticipated that it is certainly understandable. And there is, though, a divide there. The state, while it, it is understandable, the request that they make, the court <clears throat> there is some separation given here in this process, and the court will be the one to impose it. Um, so our request that you give consecutive life sentences on counts one and count five. We have no position on the remaining counts. Um, we'll send a message that to whatever uh, future custodian of Mr. Ibarra as to the gravity of this crime and the gravity of the situation. That, that the court has expressed an intention for, you know, it's obviously a legal fiction that he would serve two life sentences behind bars, but the law allows that and it does, you know, it, it sends that message to the future custodians as to the gravity. But the withholding of the life without parole aspect of count one would at least give Mr. Ibarra the sliver of incentive to reflect and conduct himself with some recognition of that reflection. Um, the state agency and the state, the, the staff of that agency who will be tasked with supervising his custody uh, will have the opportunity to monitor, monitor him closely for, again, many years, many decades into the future. And it's impossible to know the future, obviously. Um, but you, by imposing life sentences without removing the future custodians to the ability to do their job um, is, is our request at this time. And we also would point out that given his status with, uh, there is an immigration hold that were he ever in the future um, to be released, it would only to be deported. And um, that's all I have. We leave it in the discretion of the court. Thank you. Before I announce the sentence, let me, uh, I, I just have a couple of a couple of thoughts. One is, 
Oftentimes, people use the term closure at an event like this, and I, 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 I acknowledge that there's no such thing as closure. It'll, it, there's, there, there, can't, there will not be closure. Uh, this is just another stage or event in this, uh, in this tragedy, and uh, that's, that's the way I view that. People, people mean well by making that, saying that, but it's, uh, I've heard it explained that when you have something like this um, that impacts one or many, um, you even have to make a conscious effort to breathe at some times. And that just comes on you at any particular, you know, if you just don't know what's going to bring it on you. Um, and you, you realize that you do make it through the day, but you don't know how you did it. Um, but I also, and this goes back to what Carrie Howell was saying, that, um, you know, as, as many times as you reflect on the loss, um, at some point you start smiling about the memories. And um, I'm hopeful that at some point that takes over to a certain extent. But um, there's very little, including the sentence of Mr. Ibarra that's going to uh, help much and I acknowledge that um, with that Mr. Barr if you'll please stand count one malice murder I sentence you to life without the possibility of parole count two will be vacated as a matter of uh, operation of law count three vacated by operation of law count four vacated by operation of law count five life in prison consecutive to count one count six 20 years to serve consecutive to count five Count seven will merge with count one. Count eight, 12 months consecutive to count six. Strike that. Uh, 12 months, but I don't want it to six. This is just going to be consecutive. Um, Count nine, 12 months consecutive. Count 10, five years consecutive to count six. So that would mean the misdemeanors would come after the felonies. That will be the sentence. Mr. Barr, I will advise you that you have 30 days from today to seek uh, any post-judgment relief in the form of a motion for a new trial or um, appealing this case directly. Um, if you make a motion for a new trial and that is denied, you have 30 days from that date to file your first appeal, first level of appeal. The court will appoint a lawyer to represent you if you cannot afford one. I'll also advise you that you have four years from the date that your conviction becomes final in order to file a habeas corpus petition. Mr. Donnelly, can you tell me, uh, are you all going to 
be involved in the next stage? That remains to be seen, but we, my understanding is that we will remain on uh, at the court's appointment until um, unless relieved by conflict counsel. All right, and you'll make make those arrangements. We will communicate that with okay. Mr. Vara and with the court. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Ross? No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, it's going to take a little. Yeah, can we take the. We're all moving and we can go down and get some stuff. Okay, that'll be fine. We can do that. Everybody remain seated, please. Okay. All right. That will conclude the proceedings.